James is saying that through confessing our sins, we can experience a kind of healing, an objective assurance from a brother or sister telling us that we're forgiven. And then we can also receive godly guidance in dealing with sin and finding greater freedom from its power. James isn't saying that we should confess our sins to just anybody. Uh, It's good to confess your sins to mature Christians, usually a pastor or an elder who can remind you of the gospel, that through faith in Jesus, your sins are forgiven, and also give you wise guidance in uh, how to grow in the grace and knowledge of, of our Lord and Savior. But any Christian can give you this assurance. Any Christian can, on the basis of of God's word, as a priest, in Jesus Christ, we're all prophets, priests, and kings. Uh, The priesthood of all believers means that we can all give each other that assurance in, in the gospel. And as far as the last clause, that you may be healed, James is talking about what happens in the normal era of the church, apart from the signs and wonders of Jesus and the apostles. He doesn't say that they'll always be healed. Everyone, Jesus and the apostles, by his authority healed, were healed. But today we pray for healing, and we even may ask the elders to come and pray with those who are dying, anointing them with oil, as James says here, that they might be restored to life. But even if the Lord calls them home, they're with him. Their sins are forgiven, and that's the main point that James makes here, giving those, especially who are dying, who are, who are severely ill, going to their deathbed and assuring them from the lips of a fellow sinner in the name of Christ that their sins are forgiven.